Hi, my name is Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we are looking at Jewel Springs. There's a spring. <laughs> and uh, what you know? Why do they have them? The ER file that's sat right in front of me right now has Jewel Springs. Why are there Jewel valve springs in an engine? What are they for? Surely it's adding complexity in parts count and cost and what have you. What is the whole purpose? So the whole purpose of having Jewel Springs is to um, stop resonance and harmonics and all sorts of lovely jubbly bubblies. So we'll just go through a quick explanation of what is the problem and how you can solve it. So the issue is, is that springs are springy and springs are made usually generally of steel, spring steel and every single material on earth has a resonance frequency and the problem with resonance frequencies is that for springs in particular is that a spring has its springiness you know it elastically deforms and then just goes back to um, its original shape applying pressure as it goes as it tries to pop back into shape now what happens is, is when engines, you know, they operate at whatever speeds and there's oscillations and vibrations through the entire system and pressing the spring down and open and open, that adds an oscillation in there. Any kind of frequency, any kind of repeat, any kind of repeated movement or pattern. The spring, or springs in general, when they reach their resonance frequency, they stop behaving like a spring. In a sense, they go rigid which means that they either go rigid when they're open or when they're closed when you let go you know take off the pressure like from a cam and a valve the spring just doesn't pop back out in the way it usually does now usually it's not like you compress the spring let go of it and it just stays there it does expand back but it doesn't expand back with the um, same force the spring rate the spring force and so on and so forth and there's two things that you can do to affect the resonance Number one is the cross-sectional um, area. So if you look at the, you know, your chopper spring, and you have a look at its, uh, its um, diameter, the, the uh, wire gauge that the spring was made from. If you have a smaller spring, let's just say that this one oscillates at 11,000 hertz, and this one will oscillate at, I don't know, 6,726. It doesn't really matter what it is, but each. Um, cross-sectional area of a spring will have a different resonance frequency because of its mass and so on and so forth. So what happens is, is when you um, operate engines at certain RPMs you start to get valve bounce and valve flow. Now I'll do videos on explaining exactly what they are because they do deserve their own videos. But basically it doesn't do what a spring should do properly. So what you can do is or what manufacturers do because it's the easiest way around it in a sense it's the cheapest and you just know it's going to work is do exactly this you have two different springs with two different cross-sectional uh, diameters so you'll have one spring like this and then you'll have a smaller spring on the inside like so and hence you have your dual springs but there is one other there is one other thing you can do is you can actually try, if you want to spend the time, you can actually change the cross-sectional um, shape. So there are some springs that are this shape, or there are some springs that are like this with a chamfer on the inside. There are springs that have different cross-sectional um, cross shapes. And the reason why they do that is sometimes these springs can go to 23,000 hertz or something like that, which is well beyond what the engine can do. Um, this is one of the most. Um, this is one of the main reasons why Ducati went with the um, Des was it Desmodronic Desmodronic valves. I always say it wrong. I always, I always say Desmodensini because I read that somewhere. Um, yeah, this is one of the reasons why Ducati went with the Desmo valves because they, they don't well, because they don't have springs, so they can go at half, half, uh, higher RPMs. I will do a video on um, the Desmos because even though, yes, it stops the resonance frequencies of springs by just negating springs altogether, it does have its issues in other ways, so we will actually look at that, that'll be quite an interesting video. Um, so that's basically, if you have two springs, 
when one spring starts to resonate and starts not work properly it is not in the same reson resonance frequency as the other spring so the other spring takes over and once the centre spring starts to go a bit wobbly and shitty the bigger spring has passed its resonance frequency and it's operating normally again so that's the reason for dual springs it's to make sure that your springs just keep on working right i hope that made sense and i'll see you in a bit